Welcome. Thank you for having me. Um, I thought I'd spend my five minutes to talk about something sort of practical from a CDN perspective um, and just talk about you know, how our customers look at the CDN and, and what they need to get from us when we're delivering objects. So we deliver lots of different things, game downloads, software downloads, firmware updates, videos, audio streams, websites, web applications, cloud services. And oftentimes, customers need to know, hey, you know what? Is the CDN actually doing what I think I'm telling it to do, what I think it's configured to do, and what my origin's telling it to do? So we introduced some troubleshooting headers that our customers can use. And basically, these enable um, our customers to send a request to the CDN with some additional request headers that uh, allow the CDN to be asked to send back some debug information about what it's doing. So this is a request response flow piece uh, where your systems, your monitoring systems, your spot checks, your uh, continuous ongoing monitoring systems can add in some additional headers to request some detail from us uh, about what we're doing. Of course, this is all secure, so there's no risk from anybody going into Chrome and looking at developer tools and seeing all of your nice debug headers from our CDN exposed in, in the real world. Um, and each individual request defines actually what it is you're asking the CDN to tell you. So you can use different combinations of uh, header requests to ask for different things at different points in your uh, app monitoring, in your spot checks, and in your applications. So what can you find out? Well, most importantly and foremost, is it a cacheable response? Is the thing I'm asking for, is it cached in the CDN? Yes, maybe. No, it's not. Or it might be negatively cached. It could be a 404 or some negative response from the origin which we are also caching. Um, this helps uh, you know what our software, Edge Prism, our caching software, what it thinks about the cacheability of the object you've request, requested. Secondly, um, we can find out what kind of hit, miss, refresh it was. Did we have to go talk to the origin? Did we just pull it out of cache? Did we miss completely? Did we do a refresh check? Were we redirected? Did we give a redirect? All of these kind of different things come through uh, in, in the information that we have. Um, and then, of course, you can find out what the time to live of the object is. How long does this object have left in cache before we go back and talk to the origin to see if it's changed? In addition to that one, we also have this piece which is a total uh, lifetime of the object. So how long has it, from when it entered cache until its TTL expires, has it actually uh, been in, in, in the CDN cache? And this is a really good one to, to use to see if we're setting uh, the TTLs correctly for an object. Has, if we're overriding what the origin is telling us to do, are we doing it properly? Are we just looking after what the origin is telling us to do? And so this is a, a great piece for just working out uh, if the CDN is doing what you think it should be. And then there's also a fifth piece, fifth piece which sort of describes um, how that lifetime total was derived. Were we able to use the headers to define how long that object should live? Were we using a specific configuration to override the headers? Did we use our defaults? Did we not cache because we were told not to? Did we use some kind of rule during, during the request and response flow to determine how long to cache something for? And did indeed, have we had that object in cache for a while? And do we no longer have the information available which tells us why we cached it? for example. So these are sort of the five key things that you can find out using these troubleshooting headers. And so here's a straightforward example of how to do it. Here's a, a curl request. We're going to go to www.5x.com, which is a bit like an old Australian beer, but newer. Um, and what we're going to do is add a couple of uh, additional headers at the bottom, uh, which is the secret that we send through, which tells us that we're authenticated to pass back the headers. And then it's a string of the headers that we're interested in getting back. So this is the cache hit type, uh, in this case, the TTL, and whether or not this is cacheable. And so here's a response. Uh, I've taken out a load of cookies in the response. And what we can see is the cache control head is telling us that this object, so the default object from www.5x.com, it's supposed to be no cache. It's got a max age of zero. We're not really supposed to cache this one. So our debug is cacheable header comes back and says, nope, we weren't supposed to cache that. We didn't think we should have cached it. Uh, the hit types are missed, so we definitely didn't catch it, cache it, and we've got zero seconds left on our TTL, so you know what? It's still not in the cache. 
let's look at another one. This is for an image called uh, image name. Um, so uh, this time we've added the same uh, debug secret and we've got the same headers we're requesting. And here's another response for this particular object. What we can see this time is that we've basically got uh, three headers or four headers which indicate it should be cacheable. The cache control header, last modified, our expires and our content length. They're all giving us a good indication that this is a cacheable object. And yep, in the, uh, in the debug headers coming back, yes, it was cacheable, it was a hit, and we have 382 seconds left before we're gonna go and do another refresh check. So that's how we do some troubleshooting with HTTP headers, short and sweet. I hope that was informative for you, and come and see us on the stand in the exhibition hall. Thank you very much.